I'm Chris Bryant, CCA number 12933, and welcome to the Cisco Certification 5-Minute Video Practice Exam, where today we'll be taking a look at EIGRP, ACLs, and just a little bit more to help you get ready for success on your Cisco certification exams. Just a quick reminder that upcoming very shortly, we're going to have free on-demand Ether Channel and Frame Relay Fundamental webinars. These webinars I teach live every month. We're going to put them into on-demand format as well, so you can watch them whenever you get ready to. Plus, my famous 30-hour CCNA Mastermind webinar debuts in full on-demand mode in October 2009. We'll have live weekly chats, training sessions, a new forum where you'll have your questions answered daily, plus other features you'll find only with the Bryant Advantage. Again, that uh, blog address is the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com and that's where we'll be making the announcements when you can see these new on-demand webinars. Let's jump into the questions. As always, we're going to go through the questions at a pretty good clip so we can come back on live equipment and take a look at the answers. So if you need to pause the video for a moment, feel free to do so. Let's take a look at question one. I need you to give me the administrative distance of each of those EIGRP route types. And especially if you're getting ready for the NP, you should also know the difference between the two. What makes a route internal versus being external. Let's take a look at question two. What one-line ACL would permit traffic sourced from that network, 172.12.13.0 slash 24, but deny everything else? And let's use an uh, ACL from the range 1 through 99 for that. Okay, let's move on to question three. Describe two circumstances, excuse me, circumstances under which a Cisco switch will forward a frame out every port on that switch except the port upon which that frame was originally received. And question four, what command will put an incoming Telnet user directly into enable mode upon successfully entering the password configured on the VTY lines? You should also know the default for that situation without that command. We'll talk a little bit about that here in just a moment. So let's go back through these questions then and take a look at the answers on live Cisco equipment. And with these two, we're not going to configure EIGRP because we only have five minutes. But here, the AD for the two for external, that's going to be 90. And for external, that's going to be an AD of 170. And the difference is, is that a normal EIGRP route, if you will, one that's discovered by EIGRP with no help from any other routing protocol or redistribution, that's going to have an AD of 90. And you CCNA candidates are probably more familiar with those because we don't do a lot of route redistribution in the CCNA. But it's a good idea for all of you, NA and NP alike, to know the AD for an external route, that being 170. And what makes a route external in EIGRP is that that's what we call a route that is redistributed into EIGRP, whether that be a connected route with redistribute connected or most likely from another routing protocol. Let's take a look at question two. And what ACL would make this happen? Let's bring a live pod of equipment up here and we'll take a look at iOS help here. We'll go over the five minute limit here uh, just to take a look. I'd have to spell access first. And here are the numeric lists. You certainly don't need to know all of these, but it's a really good idea for you to have the basic standard and extended in mind, and then of course the extended ranges. So here if we were asked to use 1 through 99, we'll just be boring and use 1. And we're going to permit, right, let's take another look at that question. We're going to permit traffic from 172.12.13.0. So it's a good idea to put the word permit there. Let's make sure we're getting that number right. 172.12.13.0, that's correct. And remember, we're going to we're going to use wildcard mass here because you'll notice even the router mentions wildcard bit. Since we're using a standard ACL, we can only match on that source IP address. And watch that on your exam because you want to pick an answer with wildcard bits, of course, if they're talking about ACLs. And that's it. We could use the log entry, but of course the CR there means this is a legal command as it stands. 
And that's all we need because remember we have the implicit deny at the end of that ACL. So that one line ACL will permit that traffic specifically but it's going to deny everything else. So that is how we would take care of that situation. Remember those wildcard bits or the wildcard mask. Two circumstances here. First off, if it's a broadcast frame to begin with and you know the broadcast address for frames, it's the all F's MAC address. Also, if the frame is what we call an unknown unicast then it's going to be sent out every other port on the switch. And what we mean by that is the frame has a unicast address, a unicast destination address, but the switch has not learned where that address is yet. So if it's a broadcast or an unknown unicast, the frame is going to be sent out every other port on the switch except the one that it came in on. And what command will put a Telnet user directly into enable mode? Let's take a look at this particular router and we'll go to the VTY lines. First off, we need to set that password to begin with. And we'll just set it to uh, Martin. But now we've got to enable login. And we're going to do that with a login command. We have options there, but that means that any Telnet user, this particular configuration, means that any user Telnetting in that puts in the password Martin is going to get in but they're going to be put into user exec mode by default and you might not want that because then they have to know the enable password to get to enable mode. So what you can do instead is enter the command privilege level 15 here on the VTY lines. Now this is a one size fits all password. You might not want this but this particular configuration allows Telnet access to anyone that knows the password Martin when they're prompted for it and when they enter the word Martin they are put into enable mode. They are assigned privilege level 15 and that is actually as high as it gets as iOS help will show us. The default privilege line is 0 through 15 when you use the privilege level command and we set it to 15 which is the highest. So a lot of good stuff there on the live equipment. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video. Don't forget to head out to the YouTube channel as well, uh, CCIE12933, where you can see uh, just about 100 Cisco certification videos, and we've got plenty of Microsoft videos on the way. Again, thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.